you know we're ready to get into today's class okay ma'am i'll press yeah please kiran thank you father god we just come before your throne once again father god father god i'm just submitting to your hand everyone father god to me ma'am and all the students father god we just give you wisdom and knowledge father god that we can understand our subject father god father god the everything i'm just submitting to you and take care of everything father god thanking you father god to listening our prayer thanking you father god we honor you we trust you father god we give you praise and glory father god almighty jesus name i pray amen 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 thank you thank you kiran for uh, leading in that word of prayer so we will get uh, started today continuing in the book of acts so far we have seen about uh, the ascension of the lord jesus uh, uh him ministering to the disciples and his followers before he uh, goes up into heaven uh, he encourages the believers to wait for the baptism in the holy spirit uh, and we know that the believers waited for a, a long time they were in the upper room in one accord uh, and by this time in acts 1 we have also seen that peter uh, uh, leading the disciples encourages them to find that 12th disciple who uh, because of judas betrayal uh had left and uh, now they finally wo- uh, they trusted god they prayed and they selected that 12th disciple and together with 120 people they were in the upper room praying okay in one accord they were earnestly praying then in the last uh, class you know the most uh, uh, exciting part of the birth of the church which is you know and as the, those scriptures uh, uh, begin to tell us right it's it's so uh, beautiful verse 2 acts 2 verse 2 it begins with and suddenly okay and suddenly so there is an element of the church waiting upon the lord where they knew that this is going to happen and yet you know scripture says and suddenly okay so that's that's a uh, an amazing combination right there we are waiting on the lord and yet in that there is a suddenly and the holy spirit is poured out on the believers now uh, how does it come you know the description of the holy spirit at that point is like a rushing mighty wind okay so the word wind uh, is uh, relevant Uh, because of its meaning in the greek and in the hebrew now we know that wind breath uh, all these terms were used for the holy spirit so uh, along the same lines god releases the outpouring of the holy spirit and that holy spirit uh, comes forth as that rushing mighty wind and it fills the house we saw how there were tongues of fire divided tongues of fire on every single believer they were filled with the holy spirit and one of the first signs of being filled with the holy spirit that we observe here is speaking in tongues and then we looked at the fact that because they were in jerusalem celebrating the festival of uh, pentecost there were people from other nations devout men it says from other nations who were also visiting jerusalem so when the others heard the believers speak in this manner they were amazed they came out to listen to what was going on and something uh, incredible transpired before their eyes they could hear people speaking in their own languages glorifying the works of god and i showed you the map of uh, you know people from at least 15 different regions who heard their own languages so this is a, a form of tongues where people can hear earthly languages okay. later on when we study the book of uh, corinthians first corinthians paul talks about a different kind of tongues there where he says that we can speak in tongues to uh, edify ourselves and we can speak mysteries unto the lord so that is a different tongues for personal edification but the tongues that we see here it is a uh, tongues where the people are speaking in earthly languages okay um, and when this happens uh, you know they are wonderstruck 
you see the response we looked at this in the last class there is two kinds of uh, people one who say it's amazing right they were amazed uh, uh, and there is another category of people who said whatever could this be is it possible that these people are full of new wine therefore uh, there was one category that was praising what god was doing but there was another category which was mocking or which was putting down the work of the holy spirit among god's people and uh, isn't that true even today when we uh, have god working in in various ways some are able to accept it but some uh, find it difficult moving forward peter as the early leader of the church he rises up and he begins to address the people so you must remember that there is a crowd gathered devout men from many nations and they have seen the work of the holy spirit but someone needs to explain to them what is going on and that is what peter does so most probably he uh, i mean he spoke in greek Okay, the language that the people understood. So he was no longer speaking in uh, tongues to communicate to all of them, but he spoke a, a intelligent message in his own language, and he addressed them uh, to tell them what exactly is going on. So he calls them to attention and says, "Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem." let this be known to you and heed my words so he is beginning his sermon first sermon uh, and he is uh, informing them that whatever they have seen it is actually the fulfillment of joel's prophecy from joel chapter 2 and he he uh, shares that entire prophecy how he says you know in the last days it shall come to pass god says i will pour out of my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my men servants and on my maid servants i will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy i will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the lord and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved so he narrates this but remember i told you in verse 16 he says this is that so though the manifestation of the work of the holy spirit was slightly different they spoke in tongues the people uh, in the upper room but in joel's prophecy it was more about dreams visions and uh, all of that yet you know peter by the holy spirit is able to reconcile the two he is able to connect the two and he says this is that so he gives them an explanation for what they are seeing now would this have helped the people who came there do you think they would have understood when he said this is that and then narrated joel's prophecy what do you think Yes, ma'am. Maybe they understood. Okay, why? Why do you think they understood? Because, ma'am, uh, they have uh, knowledge. They have. Uh, they know know uh, what written the Bible and what is prophecy. Okay, and remember, we said that they are devout men, isn't it? Who have come from various nations. So, if they are devout men, they are devout Jews. They are people who are given to their own scriptures, and they are waiting upon God for the prophecies to be fulfilled. Okay, which is why they would have understood. And even Peter, being a Jew himself, he knows about Joel's prophecy. All right, so that is how. uh he he is basically just giving them an explanation they already know about joel's prophecy and anybody who is devout they would be waiting for the fulfillment of god's word and you will notice in what peter is doing in the ministry of peter even earlier he said that you know uh, it is written that there there will be 12 disciples right one uh, one has already left he has betrayed but we have to select the 
12th one so he went by the word of god and whatever god's word had given to them whatever was ministered to them he wanted to see the fulfillment of that word and even here you know he is talking in terms of the scriptures look at his sermon it's based on scripture whatever was spoken that is being fulfilled okay so in line with the same thing he introduces jesus of nazareth so part of his sermon for these uh, um, unbelievers at that point uh, is to reveal who christ is and this is the center of peter's sermon so from verse 22 that's what we need to do uh, today you know from verse 22 he introduces jesus and he is not giving them a confused message notice how he says jesus of nazareth very clearly okay so this is that jesus who you already know he is that and he says attested by god by miracles wonders signs which god did through him in your midst as you yourselves also know so peter is introducing the lord jesus as a man but he is saying that this man was uh, approved by god and how was he approved by god through the works of the holy spirit that were released through his life now he also talks about how jesus was delivered to uh, a trial and a very difficult death through the very works of man okay but then you notice peter again emphasizes and he says that this going through the difficulty right it is determined purpose and foreknowledge of god so why did jesus suffer he gives them the explanation this is also a part of god's plan redemption which he prepared through the work of the lord jesus christ and then he says that you know you people you have a uh, 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 taken him you have crucified him and you know you have put him to death but god raised him up and loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it so he talks about the righteous life of jesus because of which even death could not hold him we know that the wages of sin is death but you know jesus could not receive those wages because though he was tempted in every way just like a human being he never really sinned and so where is the question of him uh, being held by death so jesus was loosed it says from the pains of death so he was resurrected and the boldness of peter to actually speak this message clearly about jesus of nazareth whom they had seen being put under trial uh you know at passover so it's not far behind i told you roughly about two months prior uh, all this had taken place so what is peter actually saying he is trying to uh, let the listeners know that jesus is the messiah so he talked about jesus he talked about the sacrifice which was uh, based on god's purpose and now he moves on to speaking in their own a uh, language okay so he brings up the name of david and he says david concerning god uh, concerning him which is uh, jesus says this okay so he narrates and this is uh, these are scriptures from the psalms uh, i will read it out for you he says i foresaw the lord always before my face for he is at my right hand that i may not be shaken therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad moreover my flesh also will rest in hope for you will not leave my soul in hades nor will you allow your holy one to see corruption you have made known to me the ways of life you will make me full of joy in your presence so when david is writing these things okay he says uh he is at my right hand that i may not be shaken okay and then david is saying that uh more of my flesh will also rest in hope for you will not leave my soul in hades but is this applicable to david it is not because david as a human being actually died 
and he did not rise from the dead so by quoting these scriptures from psalms what uh, peter is trying to do is to say that a patriarch or a, 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 a very highly revered man of the jews david was also pointing to this man jesus christ as the messiah so you know in their own context because they would uh, appreciate they would honor the words of a person whom they honored so david is that individual and that is the reason peter in the sermon is quoting what david said and said look even david he said that god is not going to leave his soul in hades and then he goes on you know the explanation in the following verses there where he says look let me tell you david is buried right he is dead and buried and his tomb is with us even till today so david is already gone however who is this who has risen from the dead and then he points to the lord jesus christ uh, and, and you know he he says that uh, I'll read verse thirty. These are all important scriptures. That's why I'm just reading it. it. Says, therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to his flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. Okay, so even David was pointing to this one person who will not die, who is the Christ, who would be actually one of his descendants, and we uh, understand that. the uh, jesus his lineage right he was a son of david remember uh, we see that in the book of matthew and even when people called out to him they would say like you know son of david have mercy on us so he was from the lineage of uh, david and this is the christ or the messiah who did not taste death or whose flesh did not see corruption so he gives glory to the lord jesus and says that look whatever has happened it's not a uh mythological event or it's not in our imagination you people know this jesus and he says you were all witnesses to his trial his death and know that you know it is david who has spoken about his resurrection as well now he is coming to the point where he he is kind of um, uh connecting whatever is happening in that place with this lord jesus christ and so uh, he says that look this jesus is exalted and uh, the father had promised to send us his holy spirit okay uh, he says fa- the the promise of the holy spirit which is poured out on us which is what now you see and hear so he's saying this jesus he has done his part uh, he has paid the price he is uh, you know um, uh, like now he's with the father and now what you see is the work of the holy spirit which was also promised right by god himself so based on whatever he is sharing uh, he calls the people to repentance he calls them to acknowledge uh, this man jesus christ as the savior so uh, the conclusion of his sermon here from verse 36 he goes on to say uh, therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that god has made this jesus whom you crucified both lord and christ so the point of his message is that the lord jesus is the christ okay so what should the people do now that he has spoken to them about the messiah a very beautiful verse verse 37 the response of the people see whenever we speak the word of god and it is from god it is being ministered in the power of the holy spirit man is a spiritual being okay as much as we appeal to the intellect of man uh, the word of god appeals to the spirit of man i'm sure you all agree to that so when people heard this message okay of them being told that here is one greater than your father david whom you honor and then peter brings perspective and says the lord jesus attested by god with signs wonders miracles um 
and you know somebody who was predetermined and by the foreknowledge of god you know he did not he did not die he did not see corruption david is dead his tomb is right here you can all see it but you know i am here preaching the lord jesus as uh, the one whom you crucified but i'm preaching him as lord and as christ now we have to understand that the message which peter was bringing them was a message which they had been waiting for for uh, many years because the jews were waiting for the messiah but finally finally you know that that one message which uh, generations of jews had waited for was being preached and they were being given the key uh, to the problem which is the lord jesus is the ultimate messiah he is the one he is that uh, uh, you know he is the one whom the whom god has sent for the restitution of our sins so when this message hit their spirit verse 37 we read it says they were cut to the heart okay so they were ministered to in their spirit man now how can this happen you know how can this uh, uh, happen that people are cut to the heart the word always finds its target right and god has created us as spirit beings and so the word of god when it is preached whether people acknowledge it or not you know it definitely touches them it definitely begins to work within them so all these people who are listening to peter they were it says cut to the heart okay and when it is touching their hearts when they are understanding the message of the christ what happens you know they themselves before peter could tell them how they must respond to this message you know they are asking peter and his uh, associate standing over there he said men and brethren what shall we do you know wouldn't it be amazing if uh, we stand up and preach today and people ask us okay you have preached now what do you want us to do what is the response that you are expecting from us but that was the result to the sermon which peter preached because what did he preach he preached christ he preached the word okay he preached exalting christ and whenever we preach a message like that the power of the spirit is in it the power of the word is working and people respond in this case they definitely responded and peter had to tell them next you know what to do so in verse 38 now he says repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit so they asked him what should we do now that we are aware that jesus is the messiah and he says we must repent okay we must accept him and one of the things that <coughs> excuse me <coughs> that a believer does uh as a uh, uh you know as as a what do you call it like an action right an action of obedience uh to to letting the world know that now you're a believer is being baptized so he says repent and be baptized and the people of uh their times knew the meaning of baptism so he's inviting them to make a life decision and follow after christ so he says repent and be baptized in whose name in those days they were more aware of john's baptism but until now uh, they did not know about being baptized in the name of jesus christ but remember in the great commission jesus told them to do this work and said you go preach the gospel you know baptizing people in whose name in his name so now the church is beginning to do that work be baptized in the name of jesus christ for what for the remission of sins so the work of the messiah whatever you have been waiting for for your sins to be forgiven that is going to happen through the lord jesus christ 
and you know he also adds to it because he has already spoken to them about Joel's prophecy and they are aware of the gift of the holy spirit so he says look when you do this when you accept the lord jesus christ you will also receive the gift of the holy spirit okay because this promise is to who this promise is not just to the listeners of joel but this promise is for those in the last days right that's what joel said but here peter is explaining it further and he's saying this baptism in the holy spirit is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off as many as the lord our god will call so today then uh, we have this question okay can you and i be baptized in the holy spirit when we take the message of jesus to people and they are saved can they be baptized in the holy spirit or was it only limited uh, for that day of pentecost back in jerusalem the answer is yes you know for us who believe we are the ones who are afar off and uh, we've been told that anyone as many as the lord our god will call we are all eligible for the gift of the holy spirit so the holy spirit as a gift what the early church experienced on the day of pentecost you and i can experience today and it says as many as the lord our god will call so as we go ministering to people as we call them to receive this christ whom we preach as we ask them to be baptized in the holy spirit we can also confidently preach about the baptism in the holy spirit and say that you too can receive this gift right and what does one need to do to get a gift is there any uh, prerequisite to get a gift whenever we get a gift is there something we have to do no because it's a gift right so when we are given a gift it's not on the basis of um you know our performance but it is more on the basis of the love of the one who is giving it to us so we just receive it and we say thank you right and that is what god has done for us uh, in giving the gift of the holy spirit and we can receive that so everything that peter was offering on that day it was you know god's love god's uh, faithfulness god's goodness to the people where our sins are forgiven you know we can become children of god uh, and we can also receive the gift of the holy spirit and how beautiful people actually responded to this message of the lord jesus christ okay so uh, i hope it's uh, making sense to all of us are you um, able to receive this are you enjoying what you're listening to yes ma'am yes ma okay yes, that's great okay that's great thank you so much okay and i i hope uh, you can uh, are you is there any disturbance are you able to hear other sounds as well or you can hear only my voice yes ma'am no clear. disturbance is very clear ma'am today oh okay praise god okay because there's some construction happening near my house so i'm just trying to avoid that sound okay excellent praise god let's continue thank you thank you class okay <clears throat> right so we have seen how uh successful that first sermon that peter preached that day was uh, and also just think about this on the day when uh, they were praying it could have been like any other day isn't it because they had already been waiting jesus told them to tarry you go and you wait you pray for the baptism in the holy spirit so they were waiting for you know at least 10 days and peter did not know that that day the holy spirit is going to be poured out on them so think about this on that day he probably did not write a sermon and keep it ready ah okay today if holy spirit is poured out i am going to start like this this is the introduction of my message this is the body of my message these are the three points nothing holy and suddenly acts to two it was poured out on them right and 
Peter just stood up. How was he able to preach boldly? How was he able to preach with clarity? Okay. How was he able to bring people to a point of repentance? It was empowered by the Holy Spirit. Okay. And whatever he shared on that day came out of his life, came out of his understanding of scripture, came out of his understanding, his revelation of the Lord Jesus. Okay. So that was really a message from his heart. And you find the beautiful response to this kind of a sermon. Now, this is not to say that we must not prepare for our sermons because the Bible tells us that we must be diligent to study the word, right? We must rightly divide the word of God and it is going to take a lot of study to do that. But there can also be occasions when we are just led by the Holy Spirit to speak about the Lord Jesus, to speak his word, okay? And the response to that will be beautiful because we see that the power of the Holy Spirit accompanies the word which is being communicated. And on that day, it happened. Peter's very first sermon. And what is the response? People were cut to the heart and they are saying, men and brethren, what do you want us to do? We finally found the Messiah. And then he tells them, okay, your action points are these. Repent, be baptized. Okay, uh, and uh, you will also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now what happens? We will continue. So people heard this message and obviously they accepted the message. So in the next uh, passage here, the section of chapter 2, you see the response of the people. Was this the end of Peter's sermon? No, because the continuing verse says that he added, like he spoke a few more things, he encouraged them, he testified, right? Uh, uh, so many things. And no, he, when he said all these things, those who gladly received his word were baptized. So the people were actually happy to listen to this uh, powerful message. And on that day, 3,000 souls were added to them. I told you about the birth of the church when we were talking about the introduction of Acts. In one day, they went from 120 people to 3,120 people. And how were they all baptized on the same day? There were water sources around. So uh, these 120 people, you know, I'm sure... Uh, uh, it could not have been possible for just 12 people to baptize them. So you know, they would have baptized uh, various people and taken the responsibility, divided it among themselves, and they were also baptized. And then what happens to the people who come into the kingdom of God? You know, do we just leave them? No, because nowadays... Uh, when uh, uh, we go ahead and preach the gospel, people may respond to it. Then what, what shall we do? We... You know, it, it's easy to go to a city, preach, and then forget about the people, right? Okay, we preach, they accepted, wow, wonderful, praise the Lord, come back home. But, you know, Jesus said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them everything, right? Whatever I have spoken to you, you teach them all those things. So, it's also about discipling the people. And you see the early church doing that. So, now that people have been baptized, 3,000 people, it's not like, yeah, okay, go to whatever you want. They have to be discipled, isn't it? So what does the uh, group of leaders in the church do? We are told these people continued steadfastly or rather they were committed okay, uh, with the apostles. They were being taught the doctrine. It is termed as the apostles' doctrine. So what is the Apostles' Doctrine? What do you think is the Apostles' Doctrine which was being taught to them? Regularly, continuously, they were uh, being taught. Okay. What is the Apostles' Doctrine? You see a term there called Apostles' Doctrine in verse 42. So I'm asking you, what is that? Uh, 
you can share your thoughts so these were the teachings of the early church so what are those teachings i'm asking you on what they received from the jesus especially um, preach the gospel and those who believe correct is in the name of the father son and the holy spirit and they yes passing the tradition of uh, tradition means the uh, doctrine of taking the lord's table taking part mm. in the lord's table mm. and uh, living by faith those kind of things i i believe what i my understanding yes thank you thomas yeah that's true yes uh, kiran you want to add to that yes yes man the paul what paul received from god revelation and he preached and teach that to that the doctrine man yeah. okay okay kiran um yeah kiran i i uh, understand what you're saying but see at this point paul is not there it's only the 12 apostles okay with the other elders in the church so what is the apostles doctrine the apostles doctrine as uh, thomas pointed out uh, it's the teachings of jesus because they they were living with jesus and uh, day and night he had things to tell them and you if you recall acts chapter 1 verse 3 he taught about the kingdom of god so there must have been a lot of uh, themes he covered regarding the kingdom of god and whatever else he taught right he taught about uh, heaven he taught about hell he taught about uh, uh, what else finances he taught about uh, uh, you know worship what is true worship what what kind of worship the father is seeking he taught about you know uh, the the miracle the works that he did he said believe the works that i did so so many things jesus taught them so part of the apostles doctrine is what jesus taught them okay so they were preaching they were passing it on just the way he told them in the great commission whatever you have learned from me you pass it on you baptize the people and you teach them everything that i have taught you so they were teaching whatever they had learned and not just that uh, the apostles also believed in the uh, you know the the uh, uh, the torah the the books the old uh, covenant books right so they believed in in uh, what was given handed over to them because they trusted in it because even jesus uh, as a devout jew so he would have also read those scriptures and he also was devoted to those scriptures so whatever they had learned from the jewish uh, scriptures they were devoted to the to the torah and they in addition to that they had jesus teaching so when we say apostles doctrine it is inclusive of these two things okay so that is what they were passing on to the believers so when it comes to us today discipling our people uh thank god we have the the bible in place so we have uh, other books of the bible as well and we have paul coming in later into the scene and the revelation that he brought so we are teaching the bible okay we are teaching the final scripture that is available in the word of god for us but in those days they did not have the bible so the apostles doctrine was what was handed over to anyone who accepted christ so what is going on in the fellowship of uh, these believers one is the word is being taught okay that's a practice which the early church followed then what else we are told they fellowshiped so they were coming together right they were coming together meeting together that is also another practice that you observe here what else do you see uh, you see the breaking of bread so the practice of communion because jesus told them practice this do this in remembrance of me and they were clear about uh, this sacrament of the church so they were practicing the communion and they were also praying together so four things initially that you find within the early church the word is being taught and that is the apostles doctrine uh, they are fellowshiping together they are breaking bread and they are also meeting together in prayer so when the church is uh, functioning in this way you know the life of the church or the journey of the church the way the church is flowing uh, in uh, in those early times what do you expect god to do in their midst and through them 
in the following verse uh, i mean at verse 43 we read that great fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles so when people are following after god in this way you also see the work of the holy spirit so how does the holy spirit manifest himself you know he he uh, comes through in signs wonders his gifts and all of that so many wonders were done among the people and who were the ones who were performing these these signs at this point we are told that the apostles so the apostles were walking the way jesus walked earlier how did peter preach about jesus he said a man attested by god with signs wonders miracles and now whatever jesus did you remember uh, in uh, john 14 verse 12 and jesus says that and you shall do greater things than these okay now the church is moving in that whatever jesus did they are able to do it so through the hands of the apostles many signs and wonders were done so there was an atmosphere for the work of the holy spirit to be done in the early church so we are seeing a very powerful work being established right at the start and how marvelous you know the outpouring of the holy spirit the word is being taught jesus is being revealed people are accepting christ people are baptized they are added to the church and then this beautiful life of the church is flowing right so you have the word being taught people fellowshipping communion happening um, you know people giving themselves to prayer and the holy spirit is working at the same time and i told you the work of the holy spirit the book of acts is about what it is about the acts of the holy spirit through god's people and the acts are now taking place and jesus that's why he had told the believers you hold on you wait till you are you receive power from on high okay and then you shall be my witnesses so that has started now they have begun be, uh, being witnesses of god uh, in the city of jerusalem so this is the church of jerusalem that was born okay and all these things are taking place now you also notice you know another practical aspect of the life of this jerusalem church uh, spiritually yes all these things were going on but we are told that those who believed they were together and they also had many things in common now why do you think this happened why did they have to have things in common imagine with me they are sharing their possessions why would they need to do that again in the next verse verse 45 it says they sold their possessions and goods and divided them am among all as any one had need so why why did the church have to do that yeah um, in in the early church nobody had uh, any need they looked like the own brother and sister whatever they had they shared together and lived together okay so okay. the public church i believe okay wow good thanks thomas uh that's true that's true anyone else would you like to add your comments to it so yes the word is working and the spirit is working there is that sense of uh, brotherhood among the people that's one a uh, reason another reason is because uh, remember i told you people had come from different places to worship in jerusalem and that was a common practice during pentecost uh, they would they would gather in that manner so people did not have maybe i don't know you know they came to jerusalem and they decided to stay longer uh, they may not have prepared for it so they did not have things they may not have had food right so uh, when people are in that kind of a need the church decided to provide for them right and thankfully uh, they all had this heart of giving selflessly you know when we talk about the kingdom of god one of the characteristics of the kingdom of god is uh, living sacrificially selflessly loving others so you see that being demonstrated the kingdom of god is being demonstrated when people are in need so the church of jerusalem 
had many people who were in need because they had left their own places and they were staying in another place okay uh, and which is why the church had to take care of them and that could be one of the other reasons why uh, some people you know they they were even willing to it says sell their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need so needs were met in the early church so in this way you know they continued we are told uh, they continued how often like this it says daily daily with one accord this is the kind of fellowship which they are having we are told and where are they having this fellowship they are having this fellowship it says in the temple and also house to house so today you know we meet in the church right church for uh, a lot of us it is uh, a building or it could be an auditorium where we gather it could be a big hall uh, where we meet and lately it's online we gather uh, it's sort of a virtual temple okay so which is okay which is good can believers meet in homes will that be uh, holy enough will that be reverent enough to worship the lord the early church did that they not only met at the temple but they also met house to house so there's nothing wrong in gathering together in our homes and worshiping the lord together and uh, you know their fellowship was very simple it was very beautiful we are told they worshiped the lord they uh, spent time in god's word and it also says they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart so they kind of you know blessed one another uh, and uh, spent time with one another and it was just so uh, genuine so simple so beautiful the kind of life that the early church had so ultimately as they were doing this we are told that you know they uh, were also favored by the people around them okay and god added to this kind of a simple genuine believing church how how often did god add souls to them we are told in verse 47 that daily people were being saved and they were being added to the church so on day 1 what was their number logistics 3120 but daily people were being added how many people were being added you know we're not very sure of that it's not recorded for us here but we know you know it could have been hundreds of people on a daily basis being added because of the way god was working in their lives you know and the way uh the church was able to live its beautiful uh believing life in christ okay so uh at this point we will uh take a small break we will come back we'll talk a little bit more about the early church have a little bit of discussion and then continue into chapter 3 okay so uh all right let's let's take a break now and we will be back soon thank you <laughs> 